Good morning, everyone in the room this morning. To the Georgia family, to the Storm family, to the Mbata family, to the school, and to the autism South Africa. I want to send the condolences from the government of the Republic of South Africa to say in my language in Kosa, Alosanga Lunga Sanga Kunje Kuzo Zonga in Sanga Silapa Tinason Kulumendo Sizu. Sizo Bob, Sizo Zila, Sikale Nani, Sisiti Agutlanga Lunga Sanga, Kunje, Kuzo Zonga in Tang. Someone who spoke here before, a member of the family, said that Kadli is a big, 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 big person who has managed at the age of 10 years to gather and assemble people and many important people in the Republic of South Africa and in Mamelodi in particular into one room to talk about a very important question in our society which is called autism. In my own interpretation, autism is not a disease. It is a condition. I did not stand up when we were asked that who knows someone with autism. I did not stand up. Deliberately so. Because my nephew, he is 32 years old today. He was born with autism. He can't walk, doesn't have speech. He bumps himself. He does everything. He even bites his own tongue. It is painful to go through that process. You think that you can help, but you are helpless. So here, I'm standing here, giving testimony of the trauma of many parents in the Republic that are looking after children with autism. One of the slogans that we used to do in the Western Cape when we were still on safety and security portfolio in the Western Cape was to say, my child is your child, and your child is my child. So to look after children with autism, it should not be necessarily the responsibility of that particular family only. It should be a responsibility of the whole community, because tomorrow, tomorrow, that child will be your child because we are giving birth every day. And if we don't learn that condition from the next member of a family or the next member of the community, therefore we're not going to have necessary skills to deal with that situation when it's inside of your own house. I'm raising this matter because I called Kathy today when I was sitting there because I did not prepare a speech. I didn't know that I was going to speak. But when I see this number of people here and the complaints that we receive at Mamelodi West Police Station since the disappearance of Kathy, that necessarily means Kathy is a little giant. Many people who have disappeared 
from the beginning of the year are now reported at that police station after the disappearance of Carly. She made aware of many people that do not take more than 24 hours to report a disappearance of a person at a police station. And the police should take a case and stop this nonsense of 24 hours. There's nothing like 24 hours. Because within the process of 24 hours, our children are raped. Within the process of 24 hours, our children are killed. Within the process of 24 hours, our children are, tra are trafficked outside of the borders of the Republic of South Africa. Stop the nonsense of 24 hours. And we have taken a position that we are going to process those police officers. Because we could have got Kathy early, as early before she could reach any river in this particular vicinity. If we can use a helicopter on Saturday, why would you didn't use it on, on, on Thursday to search this area? We did not use it because of the nonsense of 24 hours. So I say we're going to process those ones and we're going to deal because the question of consequence management, it should be enforced at the police. Because the police it's a first contact of hope of our people. It's a first contact of hope for our people. And if the police are unresponsive, therefore, they must go out of the police force. Because they are not prepared to work for the people. You know, since I arrived at that police we have dealt with many of them. Because of this, this is not small. The issue of a child. We can't continue burying children. We can't continue. How kind of a nation are we that celebrates burying its own children? Because these children are the ones that are supposed to bury us. Why do we, do we sit comfortably bearing children? So we can't celebrate the death of a child. But I'm saying, is a, I spoke about her, by the way, in KZN, yesterday I was there. Yesterday at court, where a student was shot dead in the, in the university residence by a full boyfriend. We are quiet, I shuman, and then I will go to Bulum Danabantu. I spoke about the disappearance of Kathy. So I was saying, let's, let's, let's not bury children, let's protect them. If you see a child wanting, you must be concerned. You can't just pass when you see a child is wanting, is sitting idle on the pavement, you must be worried as a parent. So what kind of a nation just leave children sleeping on the pavements and not be concerned about the life of that particular child? Because my child is your child and your child is my child. So if you can take that as a theme and the program of action from this particular funeral, we will help many, many other children. I was speaking to the general this morning about our courses at college or when are we supposed to be teaching police officers how to deal and handle people living with disability. It is a challenge because the treatment of a person with disability should be a special treatment. That is why we have special schools. And it needs people with special skills to deal with that special 
condition. In general, we must look at trying to integrate that in our own courses. With those words, I would like to conclude by saying, we are here as government, we are with you, and then I said to the general, they must include social development to assist the family through counseling and other necessary issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir.